Hi, I'm Shane Clifford from the Shane Clifford Goalie School. Today we're going to talk about stance. It's a very basic, fundamental thing, but you can't believe how many breakdowns, how many bad goals are given out just because people don't start in the proper stance or the goalie. Um, let's just go over a couple key points of that. The first night is we're not always going to be on our inside edges, so the goalies will be on their inside edge. How far you get apart with your legs, you just got to be careful of that. If you're getting too far apart, your legs get too straight, therefore they're not bent, and you can't push around the net. So the first thing you do is you get on your inside edges, and then from there what you're going to do is you have, to, you have to have your knees bent. That is so important. A lot of goalies stand here, especially the younger guys, and they can't even, their stick's kind of useless to them. So you got to make sure that the second thing you're going to do is you're going to bend your knees. One thing that we're going to mention too is you're always going to be square the puck. Square is toes, hips, and older shoulders facing the puck. Okay? So bend your knees, um, skates on your inside edges, your gloves out in front on the even plane. And the thing about your stick, I can't believe a lot of people have their stick here or over here. It's got to be flat, square, right in the middle of your 5 hole. I can stick save with it. Some goalies will get over here, then because it's so far over here, you can actually get beat to your blocker. There's a lot of different things. So, skates on the inside edges, make sure you're bent, your knees are down, your gloves out in front of your body, obviously always square to the puck, a nice low position, and your stick held flat, firm on the ice, and we're ready to stop pucks. Today we're going to talk about shot preparation. Uh, I got my present from CCM, the new uh, E-Flex 3s, and they're really nice. So, uh, we're going to get into shot preparation. We need to understand that angle, square, and depth are three separate things. So when you talk about angle, let's define that. Angle is being in the middle of the net in relation to the puck. Square is toes, hips, and shoulders facing the puck, and depth is simply distance from the goal line. Remember, those are three separate things. So when you talk about being angle, I want to be in the middle of the net in relation to the puck. Generally how the goalies will do that, they start in the middle of the net here, and what they do is the puck comes down wherever your release point is, if it's in the neutral zone, wherever that may be, you just turn towards the puck and then you come out to the puck. So first thing we get is angle in the middle of the net. Remember, if you start over here and then you come out to a puck, or you start over here and you come out to a puck, you're in trouble. So you have to make sure that you're very specific to start in the middle of the net. So we start in the middle of the net, square up to the puck, and the last thing we do is come out, okay? So middle net, I'm gonna find the puck, I'm gonna square up to it, and then I'm gonna come out. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my depth. I want my depth generally back the skates top of the crease. Now depths can vary, that can be a totally different topic than right now. We're just gonna say in general, we want our back the skates top of the crease. Now, let's just say there's a puck right here. Right now, by definition, I am square to that puck and I do have depth. What I'm missing is angle. So you can understand, out of angle, square, and depth, the only one of those three that occupies any space is angle. Because I have my toes, hips, and to shoulders towards the puck. I'm, I'm, I got distance from the goal line, but I don't have angle. So, if I get angle, then I get square, then I get depth, it's a lot different, you can see. So remember, angle is the most powerful thing out of those. So if there's a pass in the back of that or front of that, we always categorize. We go angle, then square, then depth. Sometimes we will not have time to gather all three of those things, but you get, that's the order that you're going to get them in. Today we're going to talk about a shuffle. It's a very simple a basic movement, but it's one that you use quite a bit in your games. So I'd obviously be down on my stance. If I have to go and do a shuffle, when do I do that? Generally the puck is going to be on the player's stick and I have a shorter distance to move. When I go to do that, we talk about anytime you're on your feet, you've got to pivot. If I'm going this way, I have to turn this way to make sure I get square of the puck and obviously get on angle. So let's talk about the shuffle itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little shuffle, a little pivot. All my weight will be on this side here. As I push, all the weight will be off this side here. As I push, I'll stay in my stance and just add the weight back to this side, and that's how I stop. So from here, I push, and I add the weight back to this side. So let me talk about that again. When you go to do that, it's going to be the same thing either way. Make sure that if I'm going this way, I'm going to turn a little bit and do a pivot. Okay. Once I go this way, you got to turn a little bit first. That's the first things you're going to do. So it's here. Weight on this side. Weight off this side. Make sure you stay down. Add your weight back to this side again. As soon as you add your weight back, you have to get you have to you have to get weight 50-50 on each side again. I can't just stand with my weight on this side. I won't be able to move in any direction. So we don't, anytime I go get back on my stance, I'm finishing my goalie specific movement on my stance. My weight is back to 50-50 as quick as possible. Today we're going to talk about a T-Glot. The T-Glot is, is used for when you have to travel a longer distance. So let's talk about breaking that skill down. 
two things I, well, a couple things I like to add. One is no matter when you're going to tee glide, you always have, or go, any goalie specific movement, you have to turn your head and know where you're going. And you must be very accurate at that. If you're not, you're going to get off angle, you're not going to position yourself well, and that can be trouble for us. So obviously turn your head and look where you're going. The next thing is, if you're going to tee glide or you're going to shuffle, any of those movements, you have to do those as quick and hard as possible. My goal is to get pushed and get stopped before they shoot the puck. Okay? So let's get into the tee glide. First, I'd be in my stance. If they make a pass, my head will follow the puck. Then I'm going to turn. I'm going to, it's very important that you gather your feet. Once I gather my feet, I'll push and I'll stop and I'll stay down in my stance. I'm ready to stop a puck. Okay? A lot of times what I see is goalies will do this. They'll tee glide, but they won't, they won't gather their feet and then push it. It's no good. You have to make sure you stay down. So I'm going to stay down. I'm going to turn, pivot, push. And stop right in my stance, ready to stop a clock. Today we're going to talk about the pivot. The pi anytime you're on your feet and you go to T glide, you go to butterfly slide, you have to pivot. When you're down, it'll be a rotation. We'll get that later on in a different video. But today, whenever you're going to pivot, it's very important. How much I pivot depends on where I'm going. You must be very accurate with your pivots. If I miss where I'm going when I pivot, I'm not going to be on angle, I'm not going to have square, and I might have a little too much depth just depending on what happens. But if you look at me, I'm square to the puck here. So how do I get in line with the camera? I have to bring my foot in, I'm going to turn my head first, bring my foot in, point my where I'm going, and I'm going to push, and I'm going to stop. Okay? Now, if I'm going back to the post, it's going to be a more severe pivot, but at the end of the day, I'm still going to turn my head and push and go back to the post. Okay? So depending on where you're going is how much you're going to pivot. But let's be clear, they have to be, you have to pivot quickly, you need to get there as fast as possible and stay in control. To make it very clear, the only time I'm going to slide and leave my feet is if I don't have time to come over on my feet. If I have time to come over my feet, I'm way more precise and I'm going to stay on angle a lot longer. So if I ha don't have time and my time is limited, then I'll, I'll do a butterfly slide or I'll be mobile while down, use a lateral adjustment. So let's talk about the butterfly slide. The first thing I do is in my stance, I'm going to turn my head. As I pivot, depend I'm going to pivot depending on how much, depends on where I have to go. If I'm going to go back to the post, it's going to be a, a bigger pivot. If I want to go right more towards the middle and have a little more depth because I just have more time, then I won't pivot as much. So I'm going to be here. I'm going to pivot. All my weight is on this side. I stay down in my stance. And when I go down, this pad will come over first. And then when I come over, I want to make sure this leg, once I'm done pushing, and I will push off my toe, once I'm done pushing, I bring my leg down to finish my butterfly slide, and this is what I'll look like. Because if I leave this leg in the air, I can't really react to this side. If I can push, bring my leg down, now I can still extend this side if I have to, if I'm late. So that's kind of what's important with that, okay? So that's important. Once you finish your butterfly slide, your push leg, bring it in to finish your butterfly. We're going to talk about rotations. It's the same thing as a pivot. When I talk about a pivot, you do that on your feet. When you're down, you're going to rotate. It's very, it's very important. Same thing as a pivot. You're very precise with your rotations, and you're very quick with your rotations. Let's talk about how we how achieve that. So if I'm down. I make a save. What other thing? Is every time you go somewhere, you're going to rotate when you're down. Every time you're up, you're going to pivot when you're up. So, back to the rotation. I make a stick save, obviously I turn my head first. As soon as I turn my head and follow the puck, all my weight is on this side, it's like I'm stacking this side. As this leg folds behind, this leg will come up straight up. I want it close to this pad here, I don't want it out here because I'm going to lose power in my push. I need to make sure it comes all the way under, and as I get up the push, all my weight will be here, I'm kind of stacked over this side, and I would get up and push in that direction, and I'll see a T-glide. Talking about rotations here, remember, anytime you're down, you're going to have to rotate. Anytime you're up, you're going to have to pivot. So let's just say I'm down and I can rotate and get all the way to my feet, but let's say the puck hits off me and lands here. 
I still have to rotate and push over even while I'm down to make sure I get square to this puck. Even if I push back to the middle, first thing I have to do is rotate. Every time you go somewhere, you have to rotate. So make sure your rotations are very precise. So a question I do get a lot is when do you butterfly? I think you butterfly obviously if there's a screen deflection, but generally the butterfly is going to be used when your time is very limited. But the other thing it, to make clear too, you're going to butterfly when you're unsure of the puck's trajectory if it's a shot. So when he's close enough to you, you don't know where the puck's going, then you have to make sure you use your butterfly. Um, the butterfly is a very powerful tool like we talked about. The net is six feet wide and four feet high. So when we stood up, we made ourselves very skinny and some, then the net is wider than it is tall. It's very important that we play with width because the net's wider than it is tall. As far as the butterfly itself, make sure your pads are flipped up and flared out. You're gonna have your gloves out in front. Obviously I can bring them in and get compact if I need to. I'll start with them here. The other, the biggest thing I see is you gotta sit up in your butterfly. Everybody gets like this. They go to make stick saves, they put them in their own net. They're obviously a lot smaller than they should be. Pucks go through their arm and their body. You have to make sure you're sitting up. The other thing about that, it's hard for me to rotate and bring my leg up if I'm already crunched over. So I need to make sure that I'm sitting up. That way I can rotate and make sure my next move out of my butterfly is gonna be, is gonna be quick. So add that again. Make sure you sit up in your butterfly, gloves in front of your body, pads flipped up and flared out, and make sure you are big. We're talking about the butterfly. One other thing we talked about, and we've mentioned a couple of times, is sitting up. I do not mean rigid, stiff, leaning back. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about if you look from the side of me, I don't want to be this way. I just want to be nice and relaxed, sitting up on my butterfly, ready to stop some pucks. Now, one other thing about the butterfly is we have to make sure that we have both pads on the ice. You'll see goalies, they'll lean away, get their leg in the air. Obviously, pucks are going to go through your legs, even my sticks here. But the key part to this is my shoulders are turned now, not square the puck. And your butterfly, everything you do, you got to make sure you got toes, hips, and shoulders facing the puck. I'm not square to the puck. I have a lot more net open. Now, let's see I even make a stick save with my leg in the air. I still have to put it down before I can rotate and get up on the proper leg. So what's important about that is if I can also add width to this side with my butterfly if I need to, and I can do that and not have my knee in the air. So when you butterfly, it's very important that you keep both pads on there because this is not a butterfly. This is, in my mind, it's just gonna get you beat. And then if you have, if the puck hits my blocker and lands over there, I have to rotate and lift up this leg and try to push over while down in front of that puck. That's wasting valuable time. If it's above my pads, I'm gonna use my hands. If it's on the ice, I'm gonna use my pads and my stick. Today we're gonna to talk about mobility while down. We call it a lateral adjustment. Whenever I'm gonna lateral adjust, it's because I don't have time to get back to my feet. Anytime I have time to get back to my feet, I will get back to my feet. So I'm doing this because I don't have time. I need to make that clear. We just don't slide around for no reason. So if I leave a rebound there, obviously I'm on my butterfly. The first thing I'm gonna do is turn my head. Then we're gonna rotate, bring this leg under me. This leg here will come up. All my weight will be on this side. And as I go to push to that way, I'm gonna push. And what I do is I come off my toe and I'll simply just finish my butterfly. Finish into my butterfly. Once I push, I need to bring that leg down because I don't wanna leave it in here. I've pushed, it's done its job. Bring your leg back down and finish your butterfly. Because generally when you do this, the puck is going to be closer. So I leave my leg in here, the pucks are going to go through me. I'm not square. We talked about that before. So if I'm going to go lateral adjust here, I want to make sure that I rotate. I rotate and I push over, pushing off my toe, finishing my butterfly. So when we talk about blocking and reacting, they're two totally different saves. 
One, if a guy shoots a puck where I have time, I'll use my stick, put it in the corner, that's a reacting save. If he shoots the puck, I reach out and glove it, that's a reacting save. The same thing if it's shot to my blocker, I rotate my blocker and put it to the corner, or even if it hits me in my body to keep the puck in my body. Those are reaction saves. A blocking save would be, obviously the puck's enclosed, you'll see the goal is to shut it down, get nice and tight. Um, if the puck's even here and I stick my leg up to get real close to it, the puck can't really do nothing but hit my pad. That's a blocking save. If they go to stuff a puck on you and you go into reverse VH, that's blocking. 